Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are closing out the mini gardening illustration series with a wheelbarrow full of flowers. So what you see on screen is exactly what we'll be creating together. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description. You can download and install it. This week's tutorial is brought to you by Envato Elements, the Netflix of graphic design. Envato Elements is packed with thousands of creative resources, making any project quicker and more professional. My favorite is their Procreate brush section, where you can download and install beautiful brushes and design elements in a snap. They've even generously provided every Tuesday viewers with a, ready for this, 70% off coupon. So you can try it out for less than $10 a month. It's limited time though, so be sure to hit the link in the video description and grab that insanely valuable coupon and go on your own downloading spree. We'll be using my paid gouache lovers brush set for all the illustration elements. And then the lettering will be done in my mono marker brush from my font lovers brush set. But please feel free to use any brushes that you'd like. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. I work in the display p3 color profile but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to that then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine. Okay I've got my brand new canvas and the first thing we're going to do is sketch out our wheelbarrow and then we'll paint it all in and then we'll work on all of our floral elements and finish everything off with our lettering. So in order to sketch out this wheelbarrow I'm just going to select black over here so double tap where black is to get true black and then in the brushes the gouache lovers brush set I'm going to select the sketching pencil brush and now we're just going to sketch out that wheelbarrow so for the wheelbarrow it's basically a triangle shape and then we're going to make some alterations to it so if I bring this down I'm actually going to make more of like a trapezoid here so I'll cut this like this and then soften up the edges a little bit so this one's going to get a little wider curve around up here and then instead of coming straight down, I'm going to make this a little bit at an angle. So that's basically the main part of the wheelbarrow. And I don't mind scaling it up here because this is just a sketch layer. And I'm going to just erase the bits that I don't need. That way it's a little easier to tell what's going on. I'm back to my sketching pencil brush. So I'm not crazy about how long this is. I would like to be a little shorter because it'll give a cuter effect. So I'm just going to select this part of it. And I've got freehand down here selected with add turned on. And then I'm going to select it and just move it in a little bit to where it feels a little bit better. I'm going to turn off uniform and just do freeform. That way I can stretch this down a little bit. Remember, this is a sketch layer, so you can do whatever you want here. All right, I like that much better. So I'm going to make this a little more centered and then we'll complete our sketch. Okay, I'm going to create a brand new layer because I want to be able to manipulate these other elements so I can get the scale correct. So I'm going to draw a circle, hold it until it snaps, add its shape, choose circle, and now I can select the circle, make sure uniform is turned back on. That way we keep it being a circle. And I'm just looking at the scale of this for that important wheel of the wheelbarrow. And it's just going to be right up in this corner. Create a brand new layer. I'm going to end up merging all these layers together. So that's why I'm not labeling it. This is going to connect to the wheel. So the wheel is going to have the rubber tire area on the outside. I can hold this and make sure that this is also a circle. And then I'm just going to freehand a circle right here in the middle and then create a brand new layer. Normally I would call this an intermediate tutorial, but because we've already done two others in this series, I'm going to call this one advanced because I'm going to move at a faster pace because we have, we just have so much to get through here. I am right now painting the handle and what I did is I drew one line up and I want to make sure that I have relatively equal space on both sides of it. So that's how I'm getting that uniform thickness. I think I'm going to extend this just a little bit further. So most of what we're doing here is stuff that we've already done in the previous two videos in the series. So I'll leave links in the video description to both previous videos so you'll have them if you want them. So now this part is the metal part that's going to come down and hold it in place and then it's going to also attach to the handle. I'm going to make this one kind of sketchier because I want to make sure I get my angles right. Okay I'm going to shade in this handle because I just want to make sure that the proportions of everything still feel good and I'll also shade in the rubber part of the tire. 
All right, I think my wheelbarrow as a whole could just be slightly smaller. Now. I think that feels more like a wheelbarrow. I'm going to come back down on the handle part. All right, I'm happy with that. The last thing I wanna draw on is just this top lid. So sketch layer is pretty much done now. So I'm going to merge all these layers together by pinching them. And now I can center this up where I want it to go. And we can start painting everything in. I'm not going to include the flowers as part of the sketch layer on this because I want that to be more random instead of too thought out because I want to be able to manipulate things on the fly and not get confused by the sketch layer. So this is the main thing that I needed the sketch layer for. So let's paint it in and get this all set off our plate and then we can start painting in all the fun details of the florals. For the wheelbarrow itself, I'm going to first create just one shape of the main part of the wheelbarrow. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. You can grab any color you'd like for this. I'm going to grab this first color and I'm going to choose the thick round opaque brush and I'm just going to paint this entire shape in in one stroke and you will see why in just a minute. So once that is all painted in, now we're going to create a brand new layer right above it. We're going to apply a clipping mask. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. And now we're just going to add some detail to it by grabbing this second to the last pink color up on the top row. And we're just going to paint in kind of like stripes almost. So these are kind of large and there's a little bit of a color shift programmed into this brush. And I just love that you can get this painterly look really quickly. If this isn't an effect that you want to include, then you would just stop after the first layer we painted and you wouldn't put in this detail. But I love this detail, so that's why I added that in. I'm going to create a brand new layer and just add in the lip of the wheelbarrow. So that's going to be the fourth color in the second row. And I'm just going to draw a little bit of a line right here. And then I want to add a little bit of a shadow right underneath it to show that this is a lip that kind of curls over the top of it. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, drag it underneath that yellow layer that we just created. I'm going to grab this fourth color up at the top and just paint a line right underneath it. And the liner brush works really well for this because you can bring it way down and it'll stay pretty mono weight. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just showing that there's a small shadow cast underneath that lip. The next thing we're going to do is paint in our tires. I'm going to start with the dark blue color. So grab that and I can paint a circle, hold it, let it snap, add its shape, circle, and then drag it into place. And I'm just going to paint this entire thing in. So I'm going to grab my thick round opaque brush again and I can paint over the outline. I just want a better guideline to follow. I can even turn off my sketch layer for this so I can see everything really well. So this is meant to be hand-drawn looking. So I try and make it a perfect circle, but I know it's not going to be perfect, and I kind of like that it's not. So I'm going to turn off that layer, and we're going to add a layer right on top of it, turn our sketch layer back on. The next color we're going to paint is this light blue color, the first one on the second row. I'm going to paint the second one, so I'm just going to freehand this one. The outer one was more important to me because it's the main wheel. And then I'm going to create a brand new layer on top of that and grab the second color on the second row. Okay, for this wheelbarrow, I want to add the handle sandwiched between this layer and this layer. That way it looks like it's going behind this one. So I need to create a brand new layer right underneath the one that I just made. So create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab the fourth color on the second row and paint in the handle. And since the main part of the wheelbarrow will get in the way, let's group those elements together. And I can turn those off. Come right back up here to that brand new layer and paint in the handle. All right, I feel like I painted that just a little bit large, so I'm just gonna scale it down slightly. Okay, I can turn everything else back on now and we can see what it's looking like without our sketch layer. The last thing we need to do is just add that metal piece that will make it stand up when nobody's holding on to it. So I'm going to create a brand new layer underneath the handle layer. The color of this one is going to be the same color as this dot right here, so it's the darker blue. So it's the second one on the second row. Let's turn the sketch layer back on. I'm going to switch to the liner brush for this. The size of this is 8% and just follow it around. I think it needs to be just a little bit thicker. Go over it one more time. Okay, and I like how that looks. So the next thing we're going to do is start painting in all of our flowers. Let's first group together all of our wheelbarrow elements. 
and we'll just call this one wheelbarrow. Some of our floral elements will sit on top of the wheelbarrow, but the majority of them will sit behind it. So we just have to keep that in mind with layer order placement as we're working. So I'm going to start with the largest flowers first. So I'm going to create all of those on top of the wheelbarrow layer. Create a brand new layer, and I'm going to start with just the centers of just some very generic flowers. I didn't really have a specific flower in mind when I was painting these. I just wanted them to have different colored pink petals. So the centers of them are going to be this last almost maroon color at the very end. I'm just going to choose a few places. I still have my liner brush selected, which works pretty well for this. So I'm just going to choose a few different places to paint these. Okay, I'm going to have quite a few of these because they're my favorite ones out of the ones that we're painting, so I want them to stand out. I'm going to create a brand new layer, drag it underneath. This I'm going to label this top one centers, that way I can keep that straight. And we're going to start with the first petals on these, and they're going to be a darker color. So I'm going to paint them the same color as the wheelbarrow, so it's the second to the last one on the top row. I think I'm going to keep the liner brush for this. So for this, I'm going to paint in five petals on each one of these. And you can make them bigger on some or smaller on others if you'd want to vary up the scale. I'm going to create a brand new layer and this one will be light pink petals. So I'm going to grab the first color on the first row and kind of alternate your petals here. Okay, now that we have our first flowers painted in, it's really up to you, it's personal preference, if you wanna paint in their stems and their leaves or if you wanna save that for later. I personally like getting all of my floral elements positioned where I want them to go and then I start painting in the stems because if I paint too many stems at the beginning, it starts feeling really crowded and then I'm not able to fill in as many florals as I would like. So that's my personal preference, but if you'd rather have some stems and leaves in here right now, feel free to paint those in. So the next, flower that I'm going to paint in is kind of like a lupin. Let's group what we just did together. I'm just going to label this one pink flowers. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my darkest purple. So it's this one second to the last on the second row. And anywhere where I want to add in some filler, these ones are going to poke up quite a bit more than they're going to be in the middle. So I'll add a couple that are close to these flowers and then I'm going to add some up top. And the way that I paint these is I draw one little dot and then a few coming down, a few coming down. And then we'll add in some lighter colored purple on top of it. And I can reduce my brush size to change up the scale here too because I think that's still important, especially as we Start adding in all the rest. I'm actually going to repaint this one because I think I painted it way too big. Okay, create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab the lighter purple and just add in some light purple in the gaps here. Okay, we've got all of our loop pin in here and now I'm just going to paint in some flowers that are kind of going a little more crazy than these ones and they're going to be in bunches. So let's group these two together and we'll just call this one purple. Create a brand new layer. For this one, I'm going to grab my yellow. I'm gonna increase my brush size just a little bit. I'm coming up to 6% and I'm still using the liner brush for these. It just makes it a lot easier for me. So the way I'm going to paint this is put in a few bunches of these and they can vary in how many are part of that bunch. So some bunches can be you know, just a few and others can have quite a few. So it's total personal preference. I'm just looking for anywhere I could fill in some gaps and to create just a stronger silhouette instead of just having everything be like a little bit of a hump right here. I want some variation. So I'm keeping that in mind too as I'm painting these in. All right, so for these yellow ones, I'm just going to add in a little bit more detail on them. So create a brand new layer right above them. And I'm going to grab this orange color right here. And I'm going to grab the dried out brush just to add a little bit more texture compared to what we've done so far. Zoom in really close and let's reduce the size of this down to 4%. And I'm just going to paint some lines down and these will connect down into a stem.
Okay, once you have that all done, let's group those two layers together and call this one yellow. And now we can start adding in all of our foliage elements, the stems and the leaves to make this feel more like an actual wheelbarrow full of flowers instead of just some floating petals here and there. So I kind of already worked in the order that I wanted these positioned. I want the pink flowers in the foreground and the yellow flowers in the background and the lupins are right in the middle for me. So that's how I'm going to paint in the stems, keeping that all considered. So we will focus on the pink flower stems and leaves first and then move our way backward. For these pink flowers, you can see I've got some that are hanging over the edge. So let's create some leaves that are hanging over the edge with them. So these leaves need to be above the wheelbarrow layer all the rest of our leaves are going to be beneath the wheelbarrow layer so keep that in mind I'm going to paint these behind the pink flowers tap on the wheelbarrow group create a brand new layer and for these ones I'm going to start with this third green on the bottom row there are five different shades of green down here so we have quite a few to work with and I'm going to change to the thick round opaque brush for this, but you can use any brush that you'd like. So I'm just going to have a few leaves that are hanging over, and these ones I'm just going to make look a little bit curved. So I just want some foliage that is draping over the edge. That way it gives that sense of fullness right away. So that's all I'm going to have hovering over right on top of the wheelbarrow. I want all of my other elements to be behind the wheelbarrow. So for these ones, just to add a little bit more detail so they don't just look like green blobs, I'm going to create a brand new layer create a clipping mask on this layer grab my liner brush and grab my lighter green color right here reduce the size of the liner brush and I'm just going to put one line through these leaves okay so now everything else will be behind the wheelbarrow so I can come down here tap on the sketch layer create a brand new layer above it and I'm definitely underneath the wheelbarrow group and we can paint everything else. So I'm going to return back to that same green that I used for these leaves, and I'm going to paint in all of the stems and the leaves for the pink flowers. So I'm going to return to the thick round opaque brush, bring this down to about 5%, and draw in these stems. Because this is running into another flower, I wanna leave room to draw this flower stem right here. That way it doesn't get too busy with too many stems. So I'm keeping that in mind. So I know I'm going to have stems coming off of here, so maybe I only paint this down to where it's running into these ones. So I'm always keeping in mind what's around these because as soon as you start adding in your foliage, it gets so easy. Like I hate how long the stem is, so I'm just going to purposely make this a little shorter and fill that out with foliage. Plus I have these elements that are also going to have a stem coming down. Having a super long stem over here can be really distracting. This one is even longer than I would like it, but I'm going to fill it out with leaves so it becomes less distracting. So I'm just letting you know my train of thought as I work through this. I'm going to paint in some stems now, and I'm going to keep them the same shape as these ones. So they're just going to be curved at the end. I can change up my pressure as I'm painting them, which is a really quick way to vary up the size of your leaves. Okay, and we can add details on those two if you would like. I'm going to create a brand new layer, apply a clipping mask, and add in those line details. And all of our other foliage will be much simpler. It's just because these ones are the most detailed flowers that we have here. Okay, it's not looking like much right now, but I promise we're going to fill all of this out and it's going to get really, really full pretty quickly. The next ones we're going to paint are our purple flowers, which are our lupins. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab the blue color for this one, this first color on the last row. And for these ones, I'm going to use the thick round opaque brush. I'm going to draw these stems down just like I did with our pink flowers. And then these ones I'm going to give pointed leaves to. And you can see that right now, because of my layer order placement, that when I paint over an area, like right here, they're ending up on top and I need to make sure that they're behind these. So I'm going to reorder this layer after I finish painting these leaves in. Okay, so I'm just going to grab that layer and drag it right above the sketch layer. And now these elements are behind those leaves. So we're starting to fill things out 
little by little. The next one we're going to paint in are these yellow flower stems. So these ones are not going to have leaves, they're just going to have stems. And they're going to be behind what we just painted. So I'm going to tap on the sketch layer, create a brand new layer. And these ones are going to be this light green color. So tap on that. And I'm going to use the liner brush for this. So I like connecting them all first, and then I will paint the rest of the stem down afterwards. So these will come down and they don't all need to connect. We just need to give the impression that they all connect. Okay, I think we've got them all now. So now we're going to fill everything out. We're going to add in some just regular leaves wherever we have gaps. And these ones are all going to go at the very bottom. So tap on your sketch layer, create a brand new layer. And we're going to start with our darkest color and then work our way forward. So I have a really dark green right here, but we're going to skip this one for now. I'm going to show you a really easy trick that we're going to use at the end. And that's going to really make this feel full without us having to paint in a ton of elements. So stay tuned for that little trick. So I'm going to start with this dark green color and we'll add in this color and then we can add in our trick and it'll all be done. So this actually will go pretty quickly. I'm going to grab the thick round opaque brush and just paint in some really large leaves back here. And remember these are all supporting elements and they're in the background so we don't have to worry too much about them. Okay, that's nice and full. Now we're going to create a brand new layer right above that one and we're going to grab this green color right next to it so it's the third one and we're just going to fill this in with a few extra leaves. And these ones I'm going to make curved just so they're different than the pointy ones. Okay, that's looking pretty full, but we still have a bunch of gaps at the bottom. So here is my little trick. Come down to the very bottom, tap on the sketch layer, create a brand new layer. We're going to grab the dark, dark green color. So this is going to end up being behind everything that we currently have. I'm going to paint in a big block of color. So I'm going to make sure it's all filled in right here and make it as high as you want it to go. And then we're going to come up here to your magic wand, choose motion blur, layer, and you're just going to drag a line straight up and that will blur the top of it just slightly and then release. And you can see we've got a nice little blur right here. And then what I like doing is just blurring it a little bit more. So I'll apply Gaussian blur as well. Tap on the magic wand, Gaussian blur layer, and then just drag it up to a blur size that you're comfortable with. So that feels pretty good to me. I'm at about 9%. And then if you don't like how high it is, you can always tap it down a little ways. You can rescale it if you want. So this fills in all those gaps and it gives the impression that there are more flowers behind everything. So now it feels nice and full. All right, so we have our wheelbarrow full of flowers now. The only thing that we have left to do is add a shadow underneath our wheelbarrow, add in a circle around it, and add in a label, and then we'll be all set. So I'm going to group all of my floral elements above the wheelbarrow and all of my elements underneath the wheelbarrow. So everything underneath the wheelbarrow are foliage elements, so I can just label this one foliage. And basically everything except for those few leaves that were overlapping the wheelbarrow our floral elements, so I'm going to label this one florals. Okay, so let's add in our background and then we can add in everything else. I'm going to select everything that we've done so far and just center this on my canvas so everything I do next will be nice and centered. I'm going to add some text down here, so I want this to come up just a little bit to give myself some room. As I'm looking at this, I'm realizing that my handle is way too short and stubby right here, so I want to lengthen that a little bit now that I'm looking at it. So I'm going to come to come to my handle layer and just paint that over again. I'm going to reduce the opacity so I can still see it, create a brand new layer right above it, and paint over it. Okay, now I can delete the previous one. I like that much better. I do think it could be a little thicker though, so I'm going to paint another line right over it. Okay, let's add in our background color. So come to your layers, tap on background color. The background color of this is going to be this very first color up at the top. And then we're going to add in a colored circle on top of that. So come to your sketch layer, create a brand new layer. And we're going to grab the second color on the top row. And then come to your selections over here. Choose ellipse, drag out an ellipse, and then tap on the screen and that will snap it to a circle. 
So the main point here is we need a circle and then you can drag color into that. And now we can reposition that right over our wheelbarrow. I'm going to reduce the size of my entire wheelbarrow now that I see it on my canvas. I want it a little bit smaller. Okay, let's give the wheelbarrow a little bit of a shadow so it looks like it has some depth. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the circle layer that we just did. Select the third one right here at the top row and we're going to do the same thing we did before, only this time it's going to be a real ellipse. And then drag the color into it, release, drag it into position. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit, get this. All right, let's see how that looks. All right, so let's add in our lettering and then we'll be all done. I'm going to come to the very top of group, create a brand new layer right above it. We can label this one lettering. I'm going to grab this last color on the top row. I'm going to turn on my drawing guides. That way I write in a straight line and I'm going to switch to the monomarker brush in my Font Lovers brush set and write out my phrase. Scale that down, center it up. So that's how to paint a gouache wheelbarrow full of flowers directly in Procreate. And that completes our mini series of gardening illustrations. Once again, I'll leave links in the video description to everything mentioned in this tutorial, including all the brushes used, the free color palette, as well as the previous two episodes in the series in case you missed them. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.